Hello everybody, welcome. In this episode I'm gonna take you to one of the best port towns that we have in Greece, none other than Hania in Crete. We're also going to learn the art of knife making, the Cretan knife making, and eat at one of the best traditional taverns you'll ever find in Greece, in the whole of Greece. And don't forget, Sevo Greece and Travel Factory can take you to all these places. Just get in touch with me with the links given below and I'll organize everything for you. Hania is the oldest town in Crete, with rich and long history, with the remarkable monuments and houses from the Venetian times. It was conquered many times during the past by Romans, Byzantines, Venetians, Turks, Hebrews, Egyptians and Arabs till the end of 19th century when Hania was finally liberated as well as the whole of Crete and united with the independent Greece in 1913. During the ancient period, 3000 to 2000 BC, the old harbour was used by the ancient Minoas as a crossroad of all five continents. The 16th century Venetian lighthouse at the old harbour of Hania is surely the landmark of this amazing small town of Crete and lies at the extreme end of the pier. It is the first thing a visitor sees while reaching the port, one of the most important historical sites in Hania. It fell into ruins during the Turkish occupancy and was rebuilt between 1824 and 1832 during the Egyptian occupation. After having survived the World War II bombings and earthquakes, the lighthouse was restored in 2005. The base of the lighthouse is still the original Venetian base. The Venetian port lies in the heart of the old town, surrounded by picturesque alleys and streets, creating a unique atmosphere. well-preserved and restored mansions, many converted to taverns, shops and restaurants, as well as some old Turkish baths. The old town has many quarters and squares to walk, surrounded by ancient buildings and mosques, which are worth admiring. At the entrance of the harbour is the Venetian fortress, dates back to the 17th century. Built in 1629 and its purpose was to secure the entrance of the port of Hania. Today it houses the Naval Museum of Hania and a summer theater. St. Nicholas Church was built in 1320 as part of the Dominican monastery. In 1645 a minaret was added as it was converted to a mosque in 1918 it was converted back to an Orthodox church and the bell tower was added. The Cathedral of the Assumption of the Virgin Mary was built in 1879 by the first Catholic Bishop of Crete. After the Turks defeated the city in 1645, they built this mosque, considered to be the oldest Ottoman building in Hania. The economy is the distinctive domes. The Nazis bombing of Hania in World War II destroyed the minaret of the mosque. Walking through the streets of the old port town of Hania, you can feel the history surrounding you. You can see the blend of different nationalities and religions that have passed through Hania. And you can imagine the wars, the hardships, disasters, as well as love stories and romantic moments from all the people who have lived here. Spend your time just taking your coffee in one of the waterfront cafes and restaurants, watching the people go by. Or take a walk through the small alleys at night and it will make your imagination run crazy to another time that will remain in your mind forever, making your visit to the old town of Hania a unique 
and special experience. Walking in the streets of Hanya, you will come across a little shop called Armenis. Michalis is a real blacksmith, a Cretan knife maker. My grandfather opened the shop in 1912, Michalis told me. I don't know if you noticed the sign, it says Armenis. Armenis was my grandfather's nickname because he had come from Constantinople with a persecution. But because the locals were ashamed to say, let's go to the refugee to get a knife, they said, let's go to Armenis. My father took over and until the day he died, was on top of his bench and worked from the age of 11 with love and passion. Speaking of which, it can't be done otherwise. You have to love this job a lot to do it. If you don't have it in you, you don't learn. I made my first knife at 16 and I'm making knives since then, 43 years now. It feels as if his hands are made of leather. He handles the hot metal as if it was cold stone and of course, no protection glasses. There is no family in Crete that does not have at least a small Cretan knife. There are also many who use it for work and this is because they know that the Cretan knife is two to three times more durable than the commercial one and it's very sharp so they use it for food. The Cretan knife is always sold and somebody will always have at least two knives on him in case he loses one in combat. As a sign of respect and honor, two knives were given to a newborn boy in Crete. One with a black handle that's for good luck and a smaller one that he will give one day to his fiancé to show that she belongs to a man, which he would carry on her clothes and defend her honor with it if somebody disrespects The anatomy of the genuine knife is defined by the blade of which there are carvings with images from nature, war and family. Michalis is going on to tell me. One of the first tools that men created that it helped him to survive the long and difficult era of the dawn of civilization is the knife, the first non-combat weapon. For his construction, he imitated the shape of the claws of wild animals with which they caught and killed the prey. In Mykenian Greece, from 1500 BC, magnificent double-edged bronze and brass knives were made. The trade and profit motive was enough to export them to other distant European lands. And so, the export trade in weapons flourished in the Mykenian period. The knife sleeves located to the left and right of the handle that holds the knife have a V-shaped finish to secure the palm to the handle and have a strong grip on the knife with your thumb. The V-shape on the handle appears only in Cretan knives. It gives them a graphic uniqueness since no other place on the planet makes knives with such a handle. For a good Cretan knife, a knife maker can spend up to two weeks creating it. A while a simple Cretan knife without special techniques can be made in three to six days. The Cretan knife was not only the symbol of war and as a sign of friendship and appreciation. The Mandinades were engraved on the knife since the beginning. Everyone wanted his knife to write something from his personality. Even when they gave a knife as a gift, they would write a Mandinada on it that expresses the relationship between the two friends. Handles are made of white bone, mainly from ox legs, and knife makers boil them with water, ash and lime powder for about five hours, just as they did two centuries ago, to obtain a brilliant whiteness, and then they smooth it before using it. More rarely, however, the knives had dark colored handles made of horn. The many herds of goats and sheep and the horns of its buffalo, even today, offer abundant raw material to the handles of knives. 
and somewhere here, Mihalis keeps the rest of his secrets away. My visit was an eye-opener and learned so much about the Cretan knife. So, don't forget, when you are in Hanya next time, look for Mihalis at Armenis. Together with my Cretan friend Kosti, we decided to go and visit one of the most traditional rural eateries you can find in the whole of Greece. Well, at least I haven't met anyone like it myself in all my travels. 30 kilometers drive from Hanya, through the beautiful landscape of Crete, and about 500 meters in altitude, you come to a village called Draconas. A fainted handwritten sign on the road, it tells you that you are coming to Dunya. His name is Telios Trilirakis, and together with his wife Ervmophili, decided to come back to his village 20 years ago and take over his father's little cafe and turn it into a traditional Cretan little tavern. The electricity in Dragona came only in 1986, but Stelios didn't need electricity to cook, but wood and fire, clay pans and pots, homemade wood burning oven, cast iron stoves forgotten in time, his professional training as a chef and the help of his family. When asked him to talk to me about his amazing business, he told me that I must first go and see his rare breed of cattle, an ancient Cretan race which graze under the White Mountains. I really wanted to hear his story, and since he just started the oven to bake his bread, I gave up and went on. Only to realize that I'm a 66-year-old heavy man and almost died halfway climbing up the mountain. So instead, I came down again and sent the drone up to see them. Well looked after free-range small-bodied cattle, like the ones you find in the Minoyan paintings. He also has his own chickens, turkeys and lambs and grows his own vegetables planted with old seeds and surrounding wild thyme, oregano and rosemary and organic crops of all kinds, beehives, olive groves, fruit trees. Everything he sells in his establishment he grows, or it is only with his immediate reach. The bread was ready to come out of the oven when we got back made with local wheat, part of them his production. People started coming from all over the place. A bus was offloading American students. The bread was served first with olive oil, homemade cheese and oils. Everything that came to our table was almost unreal. The flavor of the wood fire has added to the taste, the comfort feeling you get with every bite was unique. The potatoes fried slow over the fire in olive oil were amazingly good. People around us moaned with pleasure. The tables scattered in front of the restaurants out on the street were full. The sound of Cretan autumn air was filled with natural aromas from the mountain herbs and Stelios fire pit. And when we thought the food was over, Stelios comes with the dessert braised lamb that was falling off the bone and only sold as an extra ingredient. At the end, Stelios didn't give me the interview I was waiting for. He said he is not the right person to talk about himself, but he sat down with us to have some of his dessert. The visit to Dunya was one of the best eating experience I had for a very long time. If you ever have the chance to visit the place, remember that Dunya's is the proof of the slow food movement. It is an experience that dozens of students from American and European universities visit to get to know its ecological operating model. In other words, do not rush it. Just enjoy the moment. Well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, 
Stay strong, stay healthy. Bye-bye.